Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion is out right now. Many new fans are playing it for their very first time, as well as longtime veterans. This video is perfect for both of those because we're here to talk about the Buster Sword. Yes, of course, the Buster Sword was also in the original game, but this time around in Crisis Core Reunion, it functions in a completely different and brand new way. The devs went ahead and implemented some new mechanics for it, as they already did with many other now great aspects of the combat for this game. I see a lot of people not using the Buster Sword's abilities properly, so today I want to put together a guide on how to use the Buster Sword, how it works, and what new abilities does Zack receive with it, as well as how to level up its new proficiency. So you don't miss a single Crisis Core reunion guide, video, or any Final Fantasy news, as well as the streams. Make sure you guys subscribe and hit that notification bell. Only 27% of you guys who watch and love the videos are currently subbed, and this is the best place to be. We also have a giveaway live on the channel all week to give away 4 more copies of Crisis Core Reunion Steam PC version. To participate, you gotta be a subscriber and tune into our next live stream on the channel. Now, let's get into the video. In Chapter 6, we finally gain access to the Buster Sword. We get a brief tutorial on how it works and an introduction to proficiency. Now off the bat, when blocking attacks with the Buster Sword, Zack receives an 80% damage reduction which is massive for combat and his regular strike attacks still do function in the same way. However, you can now press square and X together to go into a new stance, and while in this stance, Zack will never flinch from incoming attacks, both physical and magical, and he will take reduced damage. In this stance, you can press attack and do a huge AoE cleave, which is called strong attack. It hits all enemies around Zack, and then follows into another heavy massive strike, dealing devastating damage. From the moment that you start the attack animation, once you leave that stance, you lose the damage reduction buff, but still will never flinch. You can die while in the middle of the attack still, <laughs> so keep that in mind. Also, while in the stance, initiating any yellow ability materia attacks such as jump, assault twister, and many more, Zack will get bonus orange damage. We talked about this in our previous video. And the bonus orange damage in Buster Sword stance is much more than normal striking combos orange damage. Say for example, if you do 3 combo hits into an Assault Twister or any other ability, or 5 hits into an Assault Twister or any other ability, you get orange damage, which deals a lot. However, if you're in stance, just sitting in stance and go into Assault Twister, it will always do more damage than the previous way. I also have some simple combos as well we'll get into later on in the video. Be sure to stay tuned for that. So now we also have a mechanic called Proficiency for the Buster Sword. The higher you get your Proficiency percentage, Zack will gain access to powerful passive abilities. There are three ways to raise the Proficiency, but please note, depending on the battles or enemies that you're currently facing, there is a cap to how much Proficiency you can gain in one encounter. While in the stance, any incoming damage you take will raise the Proficiency, but the max amount it will go up while in the stance guarding is about 0.08%. I've seen it go a little higher than that, and I've also seen it only go up a little lower than that. It's very slightly, and it can vary. You can also raise the proficiency by killing an enemy with a stance attack. That's the regular strong attack that starts off with a circle AoE cleave leading into a heavy strike. If that kills an enemy, your proficiency will also go up. You can also raise it by killing an enemy while in the stance and using a yellow ability materia. So there are three ways you can level up the percentage in one single battle. Multiple options are always great. If you're in a long encounter, sometimes your proficiency will stop raising off of one method. It's best to exhaust the defensive blocking method first by going into the square and X stance and just letting enemies hit you until the percentage stops going up. Then you can eliminate the enemies as you want with ability materia or strong attacks. Remember, you gotta do this while you're in the stance. It can take a super long time to raise this percentage and it's important to also note and let you guys know from the beginning, it's impossible to raise it to 100%. As of right now, the max is 95%. My friend Baby Seal has tried to go further, but it won't work sadly. Hit that like button, let's get this video to over a thousand likes to help plenty of new players and veterans understand how the Buster Sword stance works. And also, share this video to help spread the word guys. It really goes a long way and helps the channel out a lot and I'm grateful for all of you guys. Now, let's get back into the video because we got some more crazy stuff to talk about. Now, the whole point in leveling up your proficiency with the Buster Sword is so that you can unlock great passive abilities. By default, at 0% proficiency, Zack starts off with Necromos. 
which allows Zack to regain a tiny amount of MP and AP every time he defeats an enemy in general. It does not have to be in the stance. If you kill an enemy outside of stance or in stance, Zack is gaining back MP and AP for that. And as of right now, recording this, there are two other passive abilities Zack can gain. However, the percentages at which they are gained are not consistent. The first passive is called Damage Limit Break, which allows you to deal more damage above 9,999 while in the Buster Sword stance. That goes for regular strong attacks in stance and yellow ability materia attacks in stance as well. One person was able to unlock it at 13%, oddly enough, I'll show that video later, while another unlocked it at 21%. However, I myself did not unlock it until 23% proficiency. And according to IGN, they did not get it themselves until 23% too. This is a major important ability to get for hard mode, and even to get it on normal mode. It'll help you out a lot with your missions later on in the end game as Zack and just completely run through enemies. The next ability and last one, as of recording this, comes at 47% and it's called Barrier Piercing. This makes any attack or yellow materia attack that's performed while in Buster Sword Stance ignore barrier effects from the enemies. So it's very good and bypasses you needing to use this spell to get rid of barriers in some fights. And so far, and I say so far because we just don't know, the game is still very new, that is the last recorded ability for the Buster Sword proficiency. There is nothing higher than that and sadly we cannot go past 95% at the time, which is still very weird to me. This could be intentional as a way for the developers to say that Zack hasn't mastered the Buster Sword and cannot master it or some weird shit like that. My friend Baby Seal said that so shoutouts to him. But essentially after 47% there is no reason to actively try to raise up your proficiency any further. So don't kill yourself trying to go over and get to 95% and remember it's impossible to even go over that amount at the moment. And now you know how the Buster Sword proficiency works. Let's talk about using it in combat. Ideally against bosses, I like to do Zack's regular strikes in 3 hit combo increments. And when I see the enemy is about to launch an attack, I can choose to dodge roll, use magic, or damage and dodge with an attack such as high jump. However, now with the Buster Sword, another great option is to hit the enemy 3 times regularly and when you see them about to attack you, go into the stance by pressing square and X and wait for them to attack. Then use your ability of choice. I personally like Assault Twister because it hits three times and the third hit can be very devastating. And from Buster Sword Stance, this is ridiculous damage. And remember, if you have the damage limit break unlocked, you can deal over 9,999 damage per hit. Zack is an absolute powerhouse with the Buster Sword and this is a great way to use it defensively to quickly start up a brutal offense and counter enemies. Now offensively against regular enemies and even bosses, I will sometimes spam going into Buster Stance and Assault Twister and then repeat Buster Stance, Assault Twister over and over again. This is especially great when you get behind an enemy to deal massive crit damage and go even further beyond the damage limit break barrier. And also when you see an enemy trying to do their big ability attacks with the percentages showing up, you can actually, majority of the time, knock it down from 100 to 0 if you're in Buster Sword stance and do an Assault Twister. It's super fun and feels really rewarding to get that pulled off. I personally hate the fact that it's tied to Square and X. I don't know if that's just me. I find myself dodging a lot, which I don't mean to, but there is a way to prevent the dodge by buffering the input while another action is being done. So this way, as soon as that action is done, the game registers the stance and puts Zack directly into it. I do this while Zack is finishing up the jump animation or even in the middle of striking an enemy. The dodging is not really that big of a deal, but it's just a weird placement in my opinion and it can be kind of frustrating like hitting that by accident when you don't mean to. One small thing I figure I should mention, when you're in buster stance and initiate an attack, after the heavy slam portion, if you go into a regular combo attack, just the regular strikes, Zack has a new attack animation where he does a quick 3 horizontal strike slash and carries back into his normal combo again. It slightly has more DPS because of the extra two hits, but it's not necessarily anything groundbreaking as of yet. I'll keep experimenting with it, but for now, it's just good to know. I would have preferred for them to give it a dedicated button, such as maybe hold square button command, since there are no hold square button commands, or putting it as L1 and R1 together. Anything else besides tying it to X. But I am glad something unique and new was added to the game. It just feels great to have access to all these options and not be restricted to how the older game felt. I mean, hell, even Triangle would have worked perfectly fine. And that is everything we know so far about Buster's sword proficiency. The 95% thing is still really weird to me. Making it level up super slow and only giving it two earnable abilities 
Makes no sense, especially since both of those abilities are earned before you even get to 50%. So then what's even the point of having it go higher than that? <laughs> I also want to note, there is a glitch reported by someone named Jiki on YouTube. They showed themselves using Blast Wave Attack while in Buster Stance, and they randomly went up from 3.92% to 13.94% in one shot. You can find their video in the description below if you want to try that method for yourself. And also what makes it weirder, right after that mission, they were able to get the damage limit break proficiency at 13%. I tried to recreate this with no success. I want to know, have any of you guys had any success with this or had it happened accidentally to you? Let me know in the comments below. Let's get a discussion going. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you are new. More Final Fantasy videos are on the way and you won't want to miss them. My name is Blitz and thanks for watching.